Venus and Adonis Even as the sun, with purple-coloured face, had ta'en his last leave of the weeping morn, rose-cheeked Adonis hied him to the chase. Hunting he loved, but love he laughed to scorn. Sick-thoughted Venus makes amend unto him, and, like a bold-faced suitor, gins to woo him. Thrice fairer than myself, thus she began, the field's chief flower, sweet above compare, stained to all nymphs, more lovely than a man, more white and red than doves or roses are. Nature that made thee, with herself at strife, saith that the world hath ending with thy life. Vouchsafe, thou wonder, to alight thy steed, and rein his proud head to the saddle-bow. If thou wilt deign this favour for thy meed, a thousand honey-secrets shalt thou know. Here come and sit, where never serpent hisses, and being set, I'll smother thee with kisses, and yet not cloy thy lips with loathed satiety, but rather famish them amid their plenty, making them red and pale with fresh variety, ten kisses short as one, one long as twenty. A summer's day will seem an hour but short, being wasted in such time-beguiling sport. With this she seizeth on his sweating palm, the precedent of pith and livelihood, and, trembling in her passion, calls it balm, earth's sovereign salve to do a goddess good. Being so enraged, desire doth lend her force, courageously to pluck him from his horse. Over one arm the lusty curses reign, under her other was the tender boy, who blushed and pouted in a dull disdain, with leaden appetite, unapt to toy. She, red and hot as coals of glowing fire, he read for shame, but frosty in desire. The studded bridle on a ragged bough, nimbly she fastens. Oh, how quick is love! The steed is stalled up, and even now, to tie the rider she begins to prove. Backward she pushed him, as she would be thrust, and governed him in strength, though not in lust. So soon was she along as he was down, each leaning on their elbows and their hips. Now doth she stroke his cheek, now doth he frown, and gins to chide, but soon she stops his lips, and kissing speaks with lustful language broken, If thou wilt chide, thy lips shall never open. He burns with bashful shame. She, with her tears, doth quench the maiden burning of his cheeks, then with her windy sighs and golden hairs to fan and blow them dry again she seeks. He saith she is immodest, blames her miss. What follows more she murders with a kiss. Even as an empty eagle sharp by fast, tires with her beak on feathers, flesh and bone, shaking her wings, devouring all in haste, till either gorge be stuffed or prey be gone, even so she kissed his brow, his cheek, his chin, and where she ends she doth anew begin. Forced to content, but never to obey, panting he lies and breatheth in her face. She feedeth on the stream as on a prey, and calls it heavenly moisture, air of grace, wishing her cheeks were gardens full of flowers, so they were dewed with such distilling showers. Look how a bird lies tangled in a net, so fastened in her arms Adonis lies. Pure shame and awed resistance made him fret, which bred more beauty in his angry eyes. Rain added to a river that is rank, perforce will force it overflow the bank. Still she entreats, and prettily entreats, for to a pretty ear she tunes her tale. Still is he sullen, still he lowers and frets, twixt crimson shame and anger ashy pale. Being red, she loves him best, and being white, her best is bettered with a more delight. Look how he can, she cannot choose but love, and by her fair immortal hand she swears from his soft bosom never to remove, till he take truce with her contending tears, which long have rained, making her cheeks all wet, and one sweet kiss shall pay this countless debt. Upon this promise did he raise his chin, 
like a dive-dapper peering through a wave, who, being looked on, ducks as quickly in, so offers he to give what she did crave. But when her lips were ready for his pay, he winks and turns his lips another way. <laughs>